Good afternoon and welcome to Definitive's Amplified Chat where we bring together industry uh, experts as well as people from our Definitive team and uh, talk a bit about our both knowledge and passion for what we love which is music and film. Um, I'm Kevin Wolf. Uh, I'm a part of the uh, Definitive team. If you do have any questions, please, at the bottom of your screen, either use the Q&A section or chat section. We'll do our very best to get to all of your questions in, in real time or at the end where we've reserved a bit of time for that. Uh, so now on to what you guys came here for. Um, to kick off this session of Amplified Chat, we feel real privileged to have uh, a special guest one of our um, key vendors that we've worked with now for decades, um, known in the industry as the best, and that is uh, Wilson Audio. And we have uh, with us Daryl Wilson, both the design uh, force behind uh, Wilson Audio, but also CEO, so he's uh, the man, as it were, driving the bus <laughs> um, with, with uh, uh, the most knowledge. One small little detail I know we'll get into there, but one of the things that I found really uh, fun, our histories have run parallel. Um, Wilson beat us by a year. Uh, they started in 1974. We started in 1975. So by the time you hit 45 years old, you start, uh, you, you, you no longer count individual years. We're, we're the same age. So I think this is really great. Um, so with that, let me introduce Daryl. Thank you for joining us. Kevin, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is a real treat. Um, uh, Daryl has an extremely busy schedule, so for us to be able to tie him down to uh, spending a bit of time uh, in the afternoon with us, this is, this is uh, really exciting, certainly for me and hopefully for you as well. Um, Wilson Audio is a uh, brand that has consistently had products that have been regarded as the best in the industry at any given time. Um, you grew up in this industry. Um, around being the best and being kind of that focal point. What was that like? <laughs> I don't know any different. Um, <laughs> it really, to, to paint the picture and to establish a timeline here, we go all the way back to 1958. It was around Christmas time. And a young Dave Wilson was sitting in his, uh, in his bed waiting for uh, Christmas the next morning. And uh, he was being... Um, kept awake by what he thought were carolers and he thought after one song that's nice you know two songs tis the season three songs it was you know it's getting a little bit too much and um after a while he looked down the street and a neighbor of his mr wills had set up his clip horn uh, loudspeakers and was playing music down the street for the neighborhood and so uh one would say that that was dave wilson's aha moment that that he was fooled by a loudspeaker by a system to think something was there that wasn't there so uh that's that's played a pivotal role in um in the development of wilson audio and where wilson audio came from so we fast forward now to college years where he uh, uh dave my dad met uh, my mom Shirley wilson he had a roommate, Ty, Ty Jameson, and, uh, and uh, Ty said that his cousin needed some help with the recording, and, um, and my dad is looking at Ty, and, and he's saying, well, Ty's not really a good-looking guy, so he had uh, low expectations for his, uh, his cousin, uh, but when, uh, when he opened the door and saw my mom for the first time, he was smitten, really, at first sight. Um, so he started... He started thinking of ways of keeping her around because he thought, you know, after this recording's done, she could walk out of my life. Mm -hmm. And so while she was looking at uh, his turntable suspended in the closet by uh, basically whammo strings, <laughs> and, you know, for isolation and whatnot, and looking at the glowing tubes of his amplifiers, um, while she wasn't looking, he uh, reached back behind the system and disconnected a couple of the cords. So the recording wouldn't happen. He he figured that uh, if he if he went through the process, and um, and kept her around a little bit longer, he'd have a you know chance to get to know her. So he did the recording, and um, and then they listened to it. And nothing was on it, and she felt so bad for him that he was spending all this time, and and so he asked her on a date, and as they say, the rest is is history. And so, um, thirteen years later, I was born, and then. Um, uh, my, my dad was a recording engineer before he was a loudspeaker designer. And so, um, you know, really in the house, um, uh, I've, I've 
been around prototype loudspeakers and about around music and him listening to master recordings and and uh, seeing you know recordings being you know pressed into LPs and and helping ship those LPs and whatnot. I mean that that that's just what I remember as my child. I don't like I said I don't know any different. Uh, but music really did fill the air, uh, whether it was uh, demos uh, of the loudspeakers and in, in the early years of Wilson Audio where we were operating out of our garage, um, or my mom warming up. She has sung my whole life. Um, and I actually used one of her recordings, uh, a recording my dad did of her to help uh, with the final uh, voicing and find uh, the crossover fine tuning for XVX. Um, and see, so, I didn't know that. That did it, you know. <laughs> Yeah, so hi-fi systems and and singing and, and music has been in my life, uh, my whole life, and and in my whole life, I've I, I know the boundaries around systems, just like my kids know the boundaries <laughs> around. Uh, you got to be careful around turntables, and mm -hmm. and I was always jealous of the cats because the cats got to sit on the Krell amplifiers as they warmed up. <laughs> they were always very warm and toasty, and. Um, so I do have really fond memories of uh, listening to music with my dad, not just in the latter years while we were developing, you know, dozens of, of, of loudspeakers recently. But when I was a kid, I, I remember walking in and, and he'd be listening and I'd sit down next to him and kind of look over at him and he'd have his eyes closed. And so I'd close my eyes next to him. And, and at that point, I really didn't know why. Um, but he took the opportunity to teach me, you know, this is what I'm listening for. This is what you should be hearing. And, and doesn't this sound real? And, and if I make this change, do you hear the difference? So that, that kind of, uh, um, of, of education has just been a part of my life. Um, business talk has always been around the dinner table. And, and so I, I, I might be diving a little bit too much into it, but uh, you know the conversations about manufacturing, inventory, dealers, um, so on and so forth, that's just been a dinner talk my whole life. Well, that's all part of it. Um, uh, to be around since 19, oh, well, for 46 years, I mean, that's, that's an impressive feat in and of itself. Um, one of the things that I'm most impressed with is for that entire time, Wilson Audio has been at that pinnacle or in that, that inner circle of the best of the best. And that's not an easy feat. Um, so hats off to you and, and your mother and your late father. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, and um, to do that, you really have to have persistence and focus. In my entire life, the, the whole concept of protocols and, and tasks and lists and getting things done in a particular way, uh, that's that's just the way my dad has operated out of the office as well as in the office, whether it's brushing his teeth or washing the car or um, you know, it, it that's just a part of how we do things. And so um persistence and focus um gets you there. Well, and I think um the the term, as I learned, I think now 13 years ago, listening to John G. Oldis in a presentation mm -hmm. he and I were doing together in our Seattle store at the yeah. second Music Matters. Yeah. Um I think we had Alexandria's. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it was a nice, nice little system uh, in quotes. And that's where I learned the term authentic excellence. Yes. And, and that's that foundation, I think, that you're describing. Um, that carries through, as you describe, through everything you do, whether, whether it's the business acumen or product design, uh, the introduction of products, um, uh, the foundation of all. Um, yeah, it's our shining light, really. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned some of the early uh, starts, you know, in particular your mother, because it was one of the questions I wanted to bring up. Um, you know, in the audio industry, the designer is always the, the you know, person that everybody um, likes to shine the light on, and it's the end-all, be-all. Um, it takes a lot more than just that um, to get there. And I know, and this is something that's in the Wilson Way, the book that you guys have on the history of Wilson Audio. Um, uh, it, there's a reference to the amount of support and the foundation that your mother brought to it that a lot of people don't know. And I know I've had the pleasure of meeting her at a couple of shows in that, and she lights up a room when she walks in. It's really yeah, astounding. 
So can you talk a little bit about that and, and, and just yeah. the encouragement and the, and the kind of push? I mean, she, she is part of the, the machine or might even be the most important part. Um, yeah. I, it, I think it was quoted in the book, some version of, of your father, Dave, would have made a handful of speakers if it wasn't for Cheryl Lee. <laughs> That's right. Well, it is, yeah, no doubt. Without <laughs> Cheryl Lee Wilson, Wilson Audio would not exist as it currently is. Not, not to say that my dad's not smart and it couldn't have happened, but my dad focused on the design and the creative side. And my mom focused really on the business management side. And thank you for mentioning the uh, Wilson Way book. It really is a, a masterpiece that John created. We gave him full access to the archives and everything here at Wilson Audio. He's been working at Wilson Audio for a couple of decades and then as a dealer before that. So he's very familiar with Wilson Audio. It was in his old store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so um, the, w when I think about my parents, I think about the concept of being equally yoked. And they were equally yoked in a private life as well as in the, in the business life. Um, so, so a yoke with two ox, right? They're, they're pressing forward and one isn't really pulling the weight more than the other, but they were doing it together. And I, I saw time and time again how they supported each other and how they, they pulled the load together. Um, there were times when, uh, you know, running a business and having four kids, life, it gets stressful. Uh, but they really were a, a healthy example of a, a great relationship where uh, both members of this relationship were equally yoked in their destination in their personal life as well as their professional life. Um, and it, it, it didn't hurt at all that their eternal perspective also um, carried them through a, a lot of their difficult times. Um, and, and they became stronger after you know each of these we we lost our house in california um uh, they started off the business really with almost 10 credit cards maxed out i mean they put everything on the line my dad was in uh, uh medical uh, design before he was in uh, before he took the leap of faith the entrepreneurial leap of faith and so he left a good job uh back behind in the medical field um <laughs> Ironically, they, they started their business April 1st. They decided to take the leap on April 1st. So my, awesome. uh, my grandparents on my mom's side, they thought it was an April Fool's joke. You know, you're going to quit your good job. And who would spend that much money on loudspeakers, right? Um, so it, yeah, interesting, interesting time. But I, I have nothing but love, respect, and admiration for my mom. She really is... Uh, a, a woman that has set a high bar in my life as far as what women can achieve in this world. Well, having got to work with you for a while, um, both your mother and father should be really proud of your carrying on this legacy. So um, to spend a little more time focusing on what you're doing today, because we've had a couple of great releases mm -hmm. of products um, yeah. and more to come. Uh, when creating a speaker, uh, and especially of, of the caliber, I mean, the craftsmanship that is, uh, and detail that is exhibited in every product, whether it be uh, uh, the smallest um, uh, tot all the way up through uh, the XVX. Um, can you briefly, I know there's a lot to the design process, um, but can you briefly describe what it takes to, to bring a product from, you know, that idea and then fully realized and and I know whether it's small or large the, the arc is still incredibly complicated the number of drivers is the smaller part yeah yeah the the parts list is um is one of many pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. um when, when I think about uh, the process of taking uh, a concept all the way through its creation to um to uh, producing it and offering it and all the iterations in between mm -hmm. really it's building upon um excellence year after year mm -hmm. uh, we have to be intensely purposeful and focused uh jim collins he has this uh concept of the marching 20 miles a day no matter if it's sunny or rain or sleet or whatever you have your uh your tasks you have the things that you're uh, wanting to accomplish uh, over the next month, next quarter, next year. Uh, and then we, we talk a lot about a 30-year plan here at Wilson Audio. 
And so no matter what's happening, it's continuing to march forward. And um, it takes a lot of dedication and um, to not to mix metaphors, but to switch gears a little bit here. Uh, so if you have four horses, right? Four horses are gonna take you pretty far if you have them all focused in the right direction. If you don't, I mean, you can be drawn and quartered pretty quick, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we don't split our, our focus here at Wilson Audio. We are focused on, like you've mentioned, authentic excellence in what we do in loudspeaker design and the reproduction of music in um, music lovers' homes. Um, so I, we're intensely focused. And, and how, do you, uh, how do you pull that all together? I mean, you've got a large team um, uh, to maintain that sense of, of culture um, must be a, a challenge in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. They have 47 employees here at Wilson Audio. Um, and we establish what, what the culture is here, the culture of excellence. If culture is something that you do day in and day out, mm -hmm. And we really strive for excellence day in and day out. We truly have a culture of excellence. So when, um, when the craftsmen and women, they come to Wilson Audio, they, they know what's expected. Wilson Audio ha over the years really has drawn in the type of people, the type of passionate and caring uh, uh, people that are intensely focused on creating things of excellence. And, and so it, it's, it's nice when you have those people who are attracted to the company where you're not having to go out and really look, you know, and, and go through and, and weed through a whole bunch of people. The, uh, the average tenure here at Wilson Audio is around 12 years. And so um, we have a, a very good track record of finding the right people and um, putting the right people in the right positions, the right stewardships, and then allowing them to just create the excellence that really they're self-driven to do. Uh, that's impressive. Um, as you know, and, and uh, close friends of mine know that have been to my home, I'm a proud Wilson owner. I have a pair of Sasha's and have for a few years now and, and absolutely love them. Yeah. Um, when I go into our Seattle store, we have a small little recent introduction of yours um, that might be the speaker that's sitting right behind me on this, uh, on the background, the XVX. Um, Sounds great oh, in your shirt. It's, they're astounding, um, and and it's not a small feat to build a product that's capable of doing what they do. Um, at the same time, I go home to my Sasha's, and while I still long for a pair of XVXs, um, there's certainly a family. There's there, there's a, the XVX is able to do delicacy, um, which a lot of large speakers can't do, but they also have the ability to go far beyond. Um, can you talk just a little bit about um, how you're able to do that? I know during Music Matters this past year, um, you described a bit about um, the, the design of the product and the ability to tie it into a room. Obviously, this comes uh, part of what we do when we deliver a product like this is to follow your lead and instructions on, on how to, to realize that level of performance. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that because um, the the craftsmanship in the loudspeaker and um, what the loudspeaker can do is one part of the equation. Um, the, the listener is really an artisan, is, is how they pull together all the components to create a, a, a symbiotic relationship within their system in their room. And then the room plays a big part. Mm -hmm. And uh, another big part is, uh, is how um, our um, our representation definitive or authorized dealers go into that space and and help maximize the performance in that space and definitive really you guys are are world class when it comes to how a system is set up how it's serviced and taking care of your customers uh, year after year whenever I've gone out and visited you guys and and uh, met these dedicated music lovers that uh, mm -hmm. come to your shows and I've had the privilege of meeting um, it's it's wonderful to see the relationships that you guys have built with them. Mm -hmm. um, so with with XVX, I'm I'm really immensely proud of of our team, and it's no small feat. After Wham is introduced, I mean Dave Wilson's magnum opus, something that that he worked on and we worked on for over five years to create, mm -hmm. and then trying to take that and. Um, and to distill that down in a meaningful way, taking the technologies 
and the R&D that went into to WAM and how do we take that and put it into a package that's just a little bit smaller, six foot, four inches tall to be precise. <laughs> and that was one of the objectives is, is uh, with WAM, um, uh, there are a couple of customers that couldn't buy WAM because it's just too tall, it's 84 inches tall. Um, and so as I was working with the, with the team and the engineers, we kind of chuckled. I said, okay, let's, let's set a, a goal here. I'm six foot four. I've been in a lot of rooms in Asia. I've never had an issue where I've had to duck and I couldn't fit. So every, uh, uh, a speaker that six foot four could fit into every room there. <laughs> um, and, and kudos to the team. They're able to execute exactly at six foot four. Um, so it, it, Everyone knows here at Wilson Audio, it's not just my name on the product. Mm -hmm. Every craftsman that works on the product either signs the inside of the enclosure that they're handcrafting or signs the paperwork that goes to what is really the birth certificate for each loudspeaker. Um, and you talked about the, the how a loudspeaker adapts to a room, mm -hmm. the integration of a loudspeaker into a system, into an acoustic environment, acoustical environment. Um, and so the, the concept of adaptability is something that we design into our loudspeakers. So for the XVX, uh, you've got the forward and rear firing port. Um, sometimes you have to, out of necessity um, or out of this aesthetics, you, you have to move the loudspeaker closer to the rear boundary. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that will cause in a rear, uh, you know, port, rear firing port configuration, it'll load the room too much and it'll be bass heavy. So having that adaptability in the low frequencies to adjust that port to forward firing uh, versus rear firing is one element that helps us, uh, that system adapt to the room. Um, also in, in the time domain, uh, the ability for the system in the mid ranges, the high frequencies and, and, and those upper arrays to adjust relative to the woofer we recognize that not all listeners sit exactly the same distance away from the speaker and have the same ear height. Mm -hmm. And so um, the music, it's a complex and it's a powerful psychoacoustic code, really, <laughs> right? And in a lot of ways, it's fragile, especially in the high frequencies when those waveforms are so short. If those are uh, delayed relative to each other, it still sounds like music. Mm -hmm. But does it sound as real? Does it does it fool the mind to to making you believe that person, that artist, is in your room, in between the speakers? Or as uh, as I experienced in the Concerto Bow, where uh, even twenty one rows back in the Concerto Bow, how big that space is! I was so impressed the last time I was there with how I could feel the music in my feet and passing through my legs and my body mm -hmm. and the swell of the horns that just wrap over and, and the sense of soundstage. Um, a system can do that. Um, we believe that it can do that best when the timing is accurate. So it can be adjusted in the low frequencies with the port, can be adjusted in the time domain with the upper modules. And then with the, uh, the the XVX, you can also adjust the rear firing tweeter. It has uh, an attenuator on the back. And so you can turn that down if a person's ceiling is shorter. If you have a really oh, tall sure. ceiling, you can turn that up. And so you get a little bit more of that airiness. Um, so adjustability um, is, we think, really critical mm -hmm. to getting a, a natural and uh, believable experience in your system. Absolutely amazing product for, for anybody that uh, has not heard them. They are in our Seattle floor uh, set up beautifully. And um, I know every time I'm in the Seattle uh, showroom, I spend time to listen to at least one cut very quickly, just as a reminder of what I'm hopefully going to sometime on my path uh, work towards. Um, with that, we, we do have a couple of questions, Daryl. Um, oh, okay. I'm gonna read these um, off. Um, uh, the first question that we got in um, is a pretty simple one, um, or maybe not. <laughs> Certainly it was a short one. Um, I'll do my best. <laughs> what do you see uh, as the biggest challenges for Wilson Audio for the next five, 10 years? Uh, that's a good one. So many people talk about um, demographics. Mm -hmm. They talk about, well, you know, the 
you, you've got an aging demographic for people who appreciate high-end audio. And I, I think that's a little bit short-sighted because at shows, I see more and more younger people coming in. It's, it's almost like the assumption with that criticism for demographics is only, only people who uh, remember the heydays of, of the hi-fi industry and how it, it blossomed and, and was exploding. And, and there was so much innovation so quickly that uh, only they can appreciate um, the experience that a great hi-fi system can give you. And I think all of us know that when we share our systems with anyone, that there's always some sense of awe that what their experience is, is, is not what they expected. So I don't, I really don't believe if we're doing our job effectively, if we're getting our message out that we make uh, fantastic products that give you um, this unique experience, that you on your end, we offer these fantastic products that give you this unique experience and we're drawing people in and we're, and we're providing the message of what we do to everyone without discriminating, you know, based off age. I don't think that's one of the issues in the industry. And I'm sure that's going to be a hot topic and people are going to disagree with me and that's fine. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, meeting, meeting the customer where the customer is at is, uh, is another one. Um, recognizing that, um, music lovers and what's being offered in in the world now as far as consumer goods there's a higher expectation for this you know what we've you know seen as excellence of what the, in luxury goods um of luxury goods whatever that means now the, the term has been bastardized so much um but uh so consumers are more and more savvy and they demand more and more out of the products that they're choosing to spend their hard-earned money on. And so what we're trying to do is continue, as you see with the XVX and other products, we're putting as much content into the product um, as, as possible. Um, th this is something that uh, my dad wrote a while ago. And it's been, you know, we talk about core values and beliefs mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. Um, some insights I haven't shared with anyone else, um, but the team here has heard it, and, and I, I thought it would be interesting. So three points. Um, music has a unique power to effortlessly penetrate the filters of rational thought and to engage emotions directly. We believe that reproduction of music with greater accuracy allows the music to convey a pure and more complete emotional connection with the listener. So with those two points, this is what we commit to. We strive to respect our customers by being honest with them. We provide a high quality product whose price is a reflection of the quality of its content. Our product's performance is accurately set forth in our specifications. Our, we honor our warranties and provide industry leading customer service and the reliability of our products is exemplary. So I, with that being said, everyone here in the building understands these points. Mm -hmm. And when, when, like the four horses, right? We're, <laughs> we're not gonna be pulled in, in four different directions and ripped apart with you know, these conflicting values and, and beliefs. We have our horses very well aligned with uh, what we wanna do and uh, creating excellence and providing the best quality products that a customer can buy in this field. Oh, that's outstanding. I, I love those three. Um, this is a, a question that actually was emailed in prior. Um, so I want to make sure to get to this one. Um, and just as a side note, we, we might even have the, a solution to display this for, uh, for this gentleman. He wrote in, he's got a pair of Sasha's, a pair of DAWs, um, and he's wanting to add a subwoofer. Yeah wants to add a subwoofer and um, the subwoofer manufacturer, it's not uh, a watchdog, um, is recommending uh, engaging an 80 hertz cross point to uh, lift the duty off of the amplifier and off of the speakers. Um, the, like standard THX? Uh, that's the same cross point, but yeah, that's what they're recommending. And, and I know uh, what we've done in our setup with DAWs, we believe in dual subwoofers and we're using the new uh, Wilson crossover running the DAW's full range. Um, yeah. 
Um, hopefully we're doing it as you uh, suggest, but um, I'd like you to answer that question, how to integrate a subwoofer. And of course you make a couple of different subwoofers, whether it be uh, yeah. Thor's Hammer or the Watchdogs, et cetera. These are really great products with the new crossover that just came out this, this past year. Yeah, yeah. D thank you to the uh, to the music lover who has and uses DAWs in their system. Mm -hmm. um, I I really do hope they bring many many years of uh, musical enjoyment. And um, so uh, so the first question is revolved around uh, crossover point. Mm -hmm. um, Wilson Audio products are designed to be linear and um, full range, truly full range systems. So uh, so cutting off your full range loudspeakers front left and right at the knees, uh, we found that that's not the best, especially if it's a subwoofer of a different manufacturer. So the element of speed and integration between the low frequencies and the, uh, the main arrays, you know, there's going to be an issue there. So uh, we recommend that you really run your front left and right's full range. Um, crossover points we found, depending on the room, and uh, we get a lot of this where people will look at a room and we're a unique bunch of people, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we can look at a room and, and we get a sense of how it sounds. So right. we're using our eyes to hear, which is another you know, <laughs> side conversation, which is interesting to me. Uh, so, so I give general uh, recommendations here. So run your DAW's full range um, and then cross over your subwoofer between 30 and 45 hertz, depending on uh, you know, how uh, accurate this, the subwoofer is and, and how well it integrates with your room. Perfect. Um, let's see, that actually answers a couple of the questions that came in. So let me uh, scan you, you these would, very quickly. I'm sorry, you, you had also um, mentioned uh, our new active crossover. Oh, yes, sorry. And, and, in, and, in, and using that, uh, you can, um, if you're using uh, two woofers or even one woofer, you can adjust the phase so you can acoustically align the woofer with the front array so you don't have to have it mechanically on the same plane. So adjusting the phase is a part of that system. Uh, adjusting the gains independently, so you can adjust for two woofers, the phase independently, the gain independently, um, and then the crossover point. Um, and then when that's all set, there's, there's a single gain control that you can turn up or down both woofers the same amount. Um, it's it's a revision of the previous watchdog controller that we had before. And so we learned a lot from that and uh, we took a lot of the customer's feedback and refined that design and uh, made a, uh, a newer, better version. Uh, was, we showed it off this year at Music Matters, um, both bringing the watchdogs in and out. Uh, and I can tell you the, the difference is pretty significant. The, the pair of watchdogs add a sense of scale um, eliminating the room we're in. So you mentioned the concert cabal house. Um, our listening room's not that large <laughs> and, yeah. and to fool that last dimension to get a sense of scale. Um, the pair of watchdogs gave that room or it, or melted away the walls. So yeah. the room felt that much bigger, which then translates also into a smaller room. Uh, I'm a big fan of dual subwoofers. I think that they can add a dimension that's that's quite spectacular, but it does take refinement and the new yeah. crossover is spectacular. And it's a great way of getting real estate is having a great hi-fi system, right? You close your eyes and you play that orchestral piece in that large room and really the the sound what you're what you're experiencing is far beyond the boundaries of the walls of your room that's right that's right yeah it's it's really pretty amazing this one um can be loaded i, I uh, but hopefully it's not too uh too complex um simple questions asking about your enclosure material and i'll say enclosure materials yeah yeah. Having sat through a bit, I, I, I know that it, there's not a material. Yeah, yeah. The magic bullet. I think every manufacturer and business schools will, will teach. You find that one material and then you have economies of scale as far as inventorying and, and whatnot. Uh, we found that not all materials are created or sound the same, right? And so um, we use materials strategically based off of their um, their mechanical and acoustic performance. And so um, you, you have, our, our, we use a lot of composites and composites are very hard to work with. They're, 
the, the composites we work with are very unique that they behave more acoustically like rubber is their damping characteristics. Mm -hmm. And as far as how dense and how solid and rigid they are, they behave a lot like metals. And so uh, the machines that we use to, uh, to cut through and, um, and to, to cut up these composites, uh, they can, they're not liquid cooled and our feed and speed rates have to uh, be modified to work at a very slow rate. Mm -hmm. um, as the bit is plowing through the material, it acts as an insulator and it holds that heat to the bit. And so it's, we've, we've gone through uh, decades of refinement on how to machine, you know, these various materials. And as we're researching and developing new materials, that's just a part of our protocol now is figuring all that out. Uh, but very unique uh, to, to work with, uh, to, to handcraft and sand and flush trim and, and all the handwork that goes into it. It's much harder than, you know, your softer uh, MDFs out there or standard materials used uh, in the industry. Um, the the sonic properties are um, are very interesting, of, of course, to me and and my dad. We listen to a lot of different materials. Um, we have a laser vibrometer system that we've measured and cataloged um, lots and lots of materials. And and with that that process that protocol, we also listen to the ones that are aren't obvious train wrecks. <laughs> And um, so, so you'll see when uh, an enclosure isn't, um, uh, isn't painted or gel coated, you'll see uh, X material generally used in the woofer section um, mm -hmm. as a, a good uh, coupling material for low frequencies as well as high frequencies, so tweeters. Um, it's been said that, um, uh, what is it, that, um, measurements you can measure um, uh, not all things that count can be measured uh, so on and so forth uh, basically uh, at, at this point in history we're able to measure document and um, understand things that we weren't able to understand and document 20 years ago because the technology wasn't around mm -hmm. and I still believe that in the future based off of innovations in in other spaces that we're able to use to refine our space we're going to get a greater understanding of loudspeaker manufacturing and and design and development and um, and music playback in the future that we don't have now so i that's the caveat the very long caveat to um in the mid-range we've refined a material uh, called s material that for whatever reasons we we have measurements on it we have a, a good understanding of why it sounds good in the mid-range but it has such an openness and beauty in the mid-range that the x material just doesn't have mm -hmm. and if you flip those if you use the s material on the woofer the the low frequencies sound a little slow they sound a little colored oh, interesting which yeah which is in, and, and whether it has uh you know something to do with the amount of energy input into it and and its dampening and density being different between the two materials and and how they perform it I look forward to being able to quantify that and, and, and get a greater understanding. But as of now, um, listening results, which at the end of the day, you're sitting in, your, in front of your system and most audio files have their lights low, mm -hmm. and they're, they're dropping the needle or pushing, you know, play on their CD player, or streaming their favorite stuff and they're closing their eyes and they're experiencing it. So you don't see what's in front of you. So at the end, how does it sound? And um, I, some materials are used as as great marketing hype, um, mm -hmm. and for us, that's that's not why we choose our materials. And so, um, the application and and where it's utilized in the loudspeaker construction um, and how it sounds are are paramount to us. We have uh, just two more questions. Hopefully, these are relatively quick ones. So, um, one is, and you started to touch on it, um, and that has to do with the paint process. And, and can you describe a little bit about the paint process and how you decide colors? Um, hmm. Yeah, col colors uh, in, in a large way are what we like. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see various cars in the market or uh, we work very closely with uh, the, the paint manufacturer and, and we see lots and lots of samples over the year. And 
you know, we'll, we'll pull some aside. And, and um, so it's, it's what we like. We also, um, our paint to match program that we have, so we have our standard paint colors, and then we have upgrade paint colors, and then we have a paint to match program. So a uh, customer says, hey, I want it to match my rug, or I want it to match the paint on my wall. Mm -hmm. um, send us a sample and uh, you know, work with your dealer, of course, definitive, and, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll continue to refine that color until it's, it's what a customer really wants. Um, if we like that paint color, <laughs> uh, we actually add it to our offerings in the future. Uh, no matter if we add it to our offerings in the future or not, we always keep some uh, and store it. So if there's ever an issue in the future, we can provide exact match to, um, to what was established as the, the reference before. Well, you did an amazing pair of custom speakers for us in the uh, Gulf colors, uh, for mm -hmm. those of you that are into car racing. Oh. Um, one of the most famous pairs we've seen come through our doors. Um, the last question I want to hit you with, I know we've run a couple of minutes over um, what we had anticipated or what I talked to you into joining us for, um, so I apologize for that. But do you have any new or exciting projects that mm -hmm. um, of course, it'll only be between those of us that are live right now. We won't tell yeah. anybody else. Yeah, and, and those people who will watch this later on YouTube and the internet in 20 years from now. Exactly. Hi, future Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there, there are a lot of things that I'm excited about that I want to talk about, but I have to restrain myself. Sure. Um, but we do have um, a new isolation device called the pedestal. Um, which we are going to be shipping very soon. And um, I, I love the idea of having tools that help people get closer to the music. Mm -hmm. The emotional connection to music really is, is, is what this is about. Um, and so in, in our own listening, we know that we could, uh, and we've done a lot of research into vibration control. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt like we could do the isolation game a little bit better than what's being offered in the field. And so when you open up the package, uh, you've got these pedestals here. And um, they're, they're uniquely designed and we spent a lot of time designing this. So, um, this the full stainless steel body it's it's heavy it's uh, substantial with the machining uh, on the top mm -hmm. which is a, a very nice touch and um, not the more inexpensive option of uh, laser etching but you'll notice um, as weight is pressed on the top the internal structure is decoupled mm -hmm. from the external housing and so yeah, as you place cool. this on, on the shelf or whatever, and you put your equipment on it, um, it rests on it and the weight decouples it. And so it's a, a little bit of a floating mechanism. We learned a lot from the Tuntot ISO base, as well as with the WAM and the XVX, uh, that micrometer system with, right. the, with the bed that the, um, uh, the upper modules rest in. So we've distilled that technology down to these really small, cool pedestals. Um, if I remember so that, correctly, they're good for 25 pounds each. So it's 75 pounds for the set of three. And if you're putting a, a relentless power amplifier, you'll need a few extras. <laughs> yeah, we also um, are uh, making a three pound version. Um, oh, so for lighter gears, uh, you know, audio research type CD players or my tech or, you know, other things that are, um, are lighter, uh, we'll have a version for that as well. Fantastic. Well, um, we'll call this a wrap with one last parting, uh, question and okay. you may not be able to answer this. Um, so this isn't meant to be a, a trick, but boy, it would be really cool if you could. Do you have an absolute favorite? product from Wilson Audio that you've uh, either been witness to, designed yourself, that you have? Um, Wilson Audio is, is more than just a job or a career for me. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, it's, I, I know nothing else, right? A lot of people have their 
I met Dave Wilson's story and it's, you know, on a show or something. And, um, he was changing my diapers. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had a, a wonderful, a lovely relationship with, with my dad. And I still have a fantastic relationship with my mom. And, and I really, truly feel blessed for that. Um, I'd have to say that the DAW, it's as far as like absolute performance, do we have systems that you put them side by side? xvx being a great example <laughs> right um i i developed uh with the team and we all put our heart and soul into finishing that 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 speaker came about after my dad passed mm -hmm. and um there's just a, a special feeling about that that speaker for me personally so um that that's i i'd say uh, probably my favorite loudspeaker and the the wham introduced in 1981 um, was before the watt, right? Who would have thought, you know, usually you start small companies will start with smaller products and build upwards. And, and my dad developed a tool for his recording because he's a recording engineer for it to bring his master tapes home and to listen to his work. And uh, then that was distilled down to, you know, the watt. And so um, to be connected with that part of Wilson Audio's history, the DAW is an evolution of the watt puppy line. Right. Um, and to hear um, the wonderful praise for that product is truly humbling for me. And um, so anyway, that's, that's it's awesome. Well, it's a wonderful product, as are all of them. And uh, from everybody here, thank you so much for taking this time this afternoon and, and joining us and, and being part of the uh, beginning of our Amplified chat. I hope to have you back again sometime in the near future. Thank you, Kevin. It's been wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. And that's a wrap.